Okay, so we believe that the King James Bible is the perfect and pure Word of God because we believe, because we believe that in order to have a final authority to know that your doctrine is right, you have to make sure every word in the Bible is perfect. Right. Otherwise, how do you know what the Word is saying? Is it, is it really saying what it's saying? How do you know if the doctrine is true? That's why we must believe in a perfect Word of God. So we believe that the KJV is the perfect and pure Word of God. Now, the modern Bibles, we deny modern Bibles. We deny all Bibles that are not King James. Some of you might go, why is that? The reason why is because modern versions, they have errors. They have too many errors. Now, I, uh, I covered a lot of their errors online, but I'm going to cover one branch of their errors. The branch of their errors that they deny, or they're not denying, but let's say weaken so that the scholars don't throw a fit. They weaken the deity of Jesus Christ. They weaken the deity of Jesus Christ. Now, according to scholars who don't know what they're talking about, and they act like they know Greek and Hebrew, but in reality that they don't, when they debate liberal scholars, and these liberal scholars tear these Christian scholars apart. So, and Muslim scholars too, they'll pull up different Bible versions. Hey, you got 200 different Bibles, we only have one, the Quran. What do you Christians have to say about that? And all these Christians, they don't have an answer for that. They go all over the floor, you know, they play, they, they juggle balls, and they don't know, you know, they're juggling the ESV, the NIV, and they're trying to hold it together. And you are calm and secure with one ball right here, the King James Bible. These guys, they have to go like this, you know, oh, I got to keep it together, those guys. <laughs> And if they drop one ball, then it's game over. Yeah. That's, their, that's the problem with them. Now, they weaken the deity of Jesus Christ. According to these so-called scholars uh, who are saved Christians, and they would say that, well, you know, these modern Bibles, they're, they're good books, you know. Well, you know, when we say that they weaken the deity of Christ, they will accuse that of, of being, uh, you won't believe it. <laughs> they call that a conspiracy theory. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious, you know? Just makes you want to believe it more when they talk like that, you know? It's just, all right, well, anyway, the point is, is that they call this a conspiracy theory. Basically, we're trying to find conspiracies in the verses that actually don't exist. That's a cop-out line from James White. But that is such a cop-out line because, okay, let's just assume that we're actually trying, okay? Let's assume that um, we're making it up that is taking away the deity of Jesus Christ. But here's my question to you, which I don't understand, all right? When you look at the name of Jesus, now there is no other name that is higher than the name of Jesus, amen? amen. Okay, so let's look at the book of Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Let's look at Philippians 2. Let's look at Philippians chapter 2. Now, let's see what the Bible says about the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Philippians chapter 2, <clears throat> and then we'll look at verse 10. That the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So notice right here that the name of Jesus is mentioned so many times in the Bible, right? All right, so you can look up your modern Bibles right here, all right? Do you know how many times Jesus is removed in the, in the modern Bibles right Come here? Come on. All right, so then the name of Jesus, the substantial amount of omission, uh, let's take the most popular Bible, all right? The most standard Bible where the textual, where the manuscript text are the baseline, yes, ma'am, it's NIV. It's NIV. So it's NIV, and then the ESV follows along with that for the newer group now. Yeah. So they're all in the same bunch. You're going to see a lot of commonalities with ESV and NIV. Jesus is removed 36 times in the NIV, and then uh, 73 times from the NASV. Wow. But let's just list the verse. Okay, so Jesus is removed. So <laughs> Jesus is removed. Jesus is, Jesus is removed from Matthew chapter 4, verse 12. Jesus is removed from Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. Chapter 4, verse 23. Chapter 8, verse 29. Chapter 12, verse 25. Chapter 13, verse 36. Chapter 13, verse 51. 
chapter 14, verse 14. Chapter 14, verse 22, and verse 25 and 27. Chapter 15 and verse 16. Chapter 15 and verse 30. Chapter 16 and verse 20. And I think the author is being very generous here not to go all the way to the end of Matthew chapter 28. Wow. <laughs> all right, so this is only from chapter 4 through chapter 16. All right, let's cover the book of Mark. All right. So the name of Jesus is also removed from the book of Mark. Chapter 1, verse 41. And chapter 5, verse 13. And chapter 5, verse 19. Chapter 6 and verse 34. Chapter 7 and verse 27. Chapter 8 and verse 1. Chapter 8 and verse 17. Chapter 11 and verse 14. Chapter 11 and verse 15. Chapter 12 and verse 41. And chapter 14, verse 22. That's all from the book of Mark, where Jesus is removed. All right, let's see how Jesus is removed in the book of Luke. Chapter 7, verse 22. Chapter 9, verse 43. Chapter 10, verse 21. Chapter 13, verse 2. And chapter 24, and verse 36. Let's see how Jesus is removed from the book of John. Chapter 3, and verse 2. Chapter 5, and verse 17. And chapter 5, verse 19. Chapter 5 and verse 14. Chapter 13 and verse 3. Uh, let's cover the book of Acts. Now remember, this is all a conspiracy theory, you know? You see that? Apparently, after all of this, you know? Apparently, you know? Yeah. All right. Acts chapter 3, verse 26. You guys made it up. You're trying to find a conspiracy. Hey, man, I'm giving you chapter and verse for it. I'm not making it up. It's you guys made it up, actually. You guys wrote it down in your own Bible. You guys made it up, man. Don't get mad at me. Get mad at yourself for translating a dumb, and in, a dumb fallible, incompetent book. That's your guys' fault, not mine. All right. Uh, John chapter, uh, Acts chapter 9, verse 29. Acts chapter 19, verse 10. Romans chapter 15, verse 8. Romans chapter 16, verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 22. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. Colossians chapter 1, verse 28. Colossians, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 22. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 14. La, 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 la. Well. Okay, now remember, by now you must all understand that, yep, pastor made all that up. Those KJV only is. They don't know what they're talking about. Now, I gave you chapter and verse, and you can look it up, okay? Yeah. All right. Now, obviously, this is not to say all modern Bibles removed all these verses, but you understand this is all found within the... If you were to look through all those verses, you're going to be surprised how much was chunked off. Yeah. All these verses will... Up, so, so, all modern Bibles, all modern Bibles is going to hit somewhere out of this <laughs> thick list, okay? It's going to hit somewhere, all right, all right? All right, now, here's another one, is that um, re removal of Lord and removal of Christ and other titles of deity uh, from immediate association with the name Jesus. So let's look at this one. Matthew chapter 13, verse 51. Yea, Lord. So that one. Uh, Matthew chapter 23, verse 8, even Christ. Matthew ch chapter 28, verse 6, Lord. Mark chapter 1, verse 1, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Uh, let's also see right here. So these names right here, these are, he's only covering the deity names that is tied with Jesus yeah. to prove that Jesus is God, that he's deity. Uh -huh. But who doesn't believe Jesus is God? Jehovah's Witnesses. Mormons, who, who, be, who believes that Jesus is not even the Son of God? Muslims, who don't even believe Jesus is the Son of God or God? Liberals, okay? <laughs> okay, so atheists, agnostics, you know? So you see right here, I mean, so look at this. This can go on and on and on and on. <laughs> so this can go on and on and on and on, yeah. Oh, by the way, conservatives too. Yeah, conservatives too. They don't believe Jesus is God. Yeah. Don't say everyone in Fox News is a safe Christian, okay? <laughs> don't say that. Have a nice day, you know? <laughs> All right. So these are specific deity names that are tied with Jesus when Jesus is named. So when that's removed, why would you do that? 
Okay, Mark chapter 1, verse 1. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is removed. Mark chapter 9, verse 24. Jesus said unto him, Lord, I believe. Lord's removed. Mark chapter 11, verse 10. Cometh in the name of the Lord. That's removed. Jesus entered. Luke chapter 9, verse 57. Lord, I will follow thee. And Jesus said. Luke chapter 9, verse 59. Lord, suffer me first. Jesus said. Luke chapter 23, verse 42. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me. That's a thief on the cross. How he got saved. Yeah, that's right. I think that's pretty, I think that's pretty troubling, right? Yeah. You, know what, you know what it says in modern Bibles? In Luke chapter 23, verse 42. The thief on the cross said, Lord, remember me, right? We know he's saved. Yeah, yeah. No, but in modern Bibles it says, Jesus, remember me. Yeah. Like, hey, dude, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like it's getting, Addressing by the first name, you know. <laughs> okay, John chapter 6 and verse 69. Thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered. John chapter 15, verse 11. Through the grace of the Lord Jesus, Christ is removed. Chapter 16, verse 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus, Christ is removed. Chapter 19, verse 4. That they should believe on Christ removed, Jesus. Chapter 20, verse 21. Faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ is removed. Romans chapter 6, verse 11, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ, our Lord, removed. Romans 16, verse 20, the grace of our Lord Jesus, you can guess, Christ is removed. 1 Corinthians 5, 4, in the name of our Lord Jesus, Christ is removed. Why would they remove Christ? I just don't understand. Yeah, it's the devil. Because you know who is a Christ? Lucifer is a Christ, didn't you know that? The Bible says he's the anointed cherub. Christ means anointed. anointed. Wow, it makes you wonder. Now, I guess I'm making this up, you know. I'm just conjuring up conspiracies. Perhaps, let me just say this, because I'm probably making it up. Perhaps there's a Lucifer being out there who's an anointed Christ, and he wants to be Christ, be called Christ more often than Jesus, which is probably why he would remove Christ from the modern Bibles. But, hey, I'm just making it up, you know. This is just a conspiracy theory, all right? So just, uh, just forget everything that I just said just now. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord. It's removed from Jesus. Chapter 11, verse 31. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is removed. Galatians 6, 17. For I bear in my body the marks of the Lord is removed, Jesus now, this does not include, I, I, I can't read. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw up. Okay, there's just so much. 1 Thessalonians 2, 19, chapter 3, verse 11, chapter 3, verse 13. 2 Thessalonians 1, 8, chapter 1, verse 12. 1 Timothy 1, 1. 1 Timothy 5, 21. 2 Timothy 4, 1. Titus 1, 4. Hebrews 3, 1. 1 John 1, 7. 1 John 4, 3. 2 John 3. Revelation 12, 17. And Revelation 22, 21. All right? Now, remember, this is all made up. Now, here's an interesting one. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 47. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 47. Now, what is hilarious is that James White, he's going to pull up some verse. I think it's at Revelation 1 or something. And then he'll mention, notice it writes here, it says, Lord Jesus, or Jesus is God, or Jesus Christ. And the King James Bible, it did not have the word Lord next to Jesus at that time. So then White says, so you see these KJV onlyists, they don't take that fair amount of criticism, that mindset, with the King James Bible. So you can see that they're biased, James White says. Now, the funny thing is this. We pulled up, God knows how many, 200-something times that Lord Christ and something like that is removed next to Jesus. If it's once in a while, once in a blue moon, or a couple of verses, we might say, okay, maybe it's a selection of words. But when you got like a list of a table where you can't, hear Pastor Kim talking, and when he's going blah, 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 with so many verses, you know that's not just once in a while, well, we're just going to translate that way. This is a deliberate attempt. All right, that's new, okay? Now, that's an agenda, okay? Now, this is very interesting. Uh, let's close with 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 47. Let me give a shout out by early manuscripts, Church Fathers, and the Authorized Version, by J.A. Mormon. It gives actual documented manuscripts for the verses, okay? So I would recommend that one. 
1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 47. <coughs> the first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the who? Lord from heaven. So we believe that Jesus Christ is God who raised himself from the dead. We believe in the resurrection. Now the problem is this, is that you probably don't know this. It's called adoptionism. Adoptionism, what that is, is like it's a Gnostic teaching, a Gnostic mentality. Paul, he warned about these Gnostics in his present day, he said. He was warning about denying Jesus to be God and that they denied a resurrection and etc. Now, you know where the NIV manuscripts and all the adored manuscripts come from, from modern versions? They all talk about Aleph. So I'll put A as Al uh, Aleph. They also have Vaticanus right here. So Sinaiticus, okay? And then Vaticanus. And then they also have Papyrus 75. So these are like the main manuscripts that they would love to use. They would love to use papyrus fragments, and they would like to use these. But here's the thing. Do you know where these th three, the papyri manuscripts and these manuscripts come, come from? Come on. Alexandria. Yep. Right. Now, do these guys believe in the deity of Jesus Christ strongly? Nope. This is where a lot of Gnostics come from, you got to understand. A lot of that Gnostic ancient gobbledygook came from is from Egypt, Alexandria area. And you would trust preachers coming out of that area? <laughs> no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch them with the 10-foot pole, man, this guy. So I wouldn't even move to Egypt. All right, so the thing is this, is that the King James Bible says, what, the second man is who? The Lord from heaven, proving that Jesus is God who came down from heaven. But Aleph and B says the second man is from heaven. It doesn't say the second man is the Lord from heaven. It just says the second man is from heaven. See, promoting some Gnostic teaching about spirits out there, not God himself. But here's another one. Papyrus 46, the second man is the spirit from heaven. See that? It's only spiritual. It's not God manifested in the flesh. What did John warn you? If there's anyone that doesn't say that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, that is the spirit of who? Antichrist. Antichrist. Yeah. They all make it spiritual, metaphorical. Yeah. Wait a minute, doesn't that sound like our good old Christian scholars today who make the Bible metaphorical yeah. and spiritualize it, not yeah. literal? Yeah. Hmm. But here's another one, The Shepherd of Hermes. So this is an apocryphal book. It's, all, it's filled with Gnostic ideals. The spirit is regarded as the pre-existent son. The Redeemer is a virtuous man chosen by God with whom that Spirit of God was united as he did not defile the Spirit but kept him constantly as his companion and carried out the work to which the deity had called him. He was in virtue of a divine decree adopted as a son. So you see right here, basically Jesus is not deity himself. Deity had a separate task for Jesus Christ. That's apocryphal, Gnostic, all that Gnostic ideal and teaching stuff. But you see, the it's interesting. So when you have especially 200 something verses or something that many, it makes you wonder why they would want to remove Lord and Christ from Jesus then. And especially if they come from the home base of Alexandria and you call us conspiracy theorists after that. That's like giving research to a bunch of, so let me be fair with the atheists. That's like giving your science research to a bunch of us Christians, and then we say that there is intelligent design. Do you think you atheists are going to believe us after that? No, you're not. You know why? Because of our home base, and the research is given to us. This is their home base. We give them the research, and the evidence is already laid out with how many verses removing the deity of Jesus Christ. That is evidence. That is not theory.